Father, I thank you. I come to your throne with praise and thanksgiving, oh God. You knew this time would come for such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, that although my physical body is here, I thank you for moving me out the way, oh God. Less of me and more of you, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that this, the word that is going to go forth, is your heart to your people, your sons and your daughters, God. I thank you that you have prepared the hearts to receive. And if this word is not for many, if it is, even if it's for few, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for breakthroughs. I thank you for newness, Lord. I thank you for the anointing, not only for me, but everyone in this house, oh God. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Take over my tongue right now, Lord. I asked you time and time and again, even up to this morning, Lord, to have your way. And I thank you in advance, Lord God, for having your way. Bless the word even now, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to be transparent, real. I didn't want to, to come forth today. It was uh, quite of a bit of a challenge opposition, warfare, just some other things going on. But God. I even tried to speak to past and try to get out of it. I'm sure he knew that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he knew. He knew what I was trying to do. And as our pastor, as the father of this house, he wasn't going to uh, let me get out of it because the word that's going to come forth is needed. I hope and pray that everyone came with expectation of the Lord. Yesterday was a, a very challenging day for me, but also a very quiet time. And... As I was laying down, I received a text, and I just want to share it because this is what I prepared, but I really needed to get this word out. And only God knows how it's going to go come, come to y'all and how it's going to end and how I just want to make sure, like, God wants to make sure that when you came in one way, you're going to leave another so this is what motivated me, and of course it comes from the word of God. I know that you can do anyone and no one can stop you. Job 42.2. Just want to read it. Nothing can stop Jesus from bearing our sins on the cross. Nothing can stop him from rising from the dead with all power in his hands. After he ascended into heaven, there was nothing that could stop the Holy Spirit from rushing in like a mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. God was determined to reside in the hearts of the people rather than temples made by hand. And there was nothing that could stop him. If nothing could stop the plans of God, then nothing can stop his plans now. When we align our lives with the plans of God, God makes us unstoppable. Everyone in here, whether you realize it or not, you're unstoppable. Don't let the enemy tell you anything different. When we are saying what he tells us to say and doing what he tells us to do, there is no mountain that can stand in our way. We speak to those mountains and tell those mountains, be gone. Get out to the sea, amen? There is no one that can hinder our progress. Guess what? It's only you. But God is about to let you know that time for that is over. There is no opposition that can intimidate us from laying hold of God's promises for our lives. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Because we're on the Lord's side. 
We can't be sidetracked, derailed, or delayed. He is unstoppable, and so are we in Christ. After reading that, I got up. I was like, all right, let me do what I have to do. <laughs> I was encouraged by the word. It is absolutely powerful. And um, I got up, got my Bible. At the, at the time, was the phone, Bible on the phone. <laughs> my iPad, my pen, because I like to write things out first and then transfer it into my, my little uh, iPad. Usually I use my laptop, but I have my iPad, amen? So as an introduction, I was speaking to someone and the person had shared how she was concerned about something that had a deadline. She was very concerned and weary. The outcome would have been, been pretty devastating. I told the person to trust God, not to lean to her own understanding. I then prayed on her behalf she shared with me a few days later, excuse me, that God showed up. She was so happy, and I was happy for her. So this same individual is dealing with some issues, old issues from years past. I told her, you have to trust God in terms of becoming free. John 8, 36, and pastor, <laughs> I was in your message, I was in your message. <laughs> if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. We just have to believe it in order to receive it. Men, family, it's time to move forward. That is the title of my message, Breaking Cycles. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Excuse me. God will confirm his word over and over and over again because... Um, when pastor asked me if I had a word, I was like, no. And then I was like, he'll give me something. The word is in us. As long as you keep reading the word, you have the word in you. And immediately, some things start, started to uh, download. And uh, last week, he, you, you're going to hear me talk about some things that you touched on, pastor. And I was like, all right, Father, I'm on the right track. Because you want to make sure that you're healing from the Holy Ghost. And you know that you are in the stream. Amen. So I was glad, as he said unto me, <laughs> let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And even Minister Angela prayed that moving forward in prayer. So again, God confirmed his word. I want to touch on the word purification. It's funny, um, not funny. God is good. Um, I received this, of course, before knowing that we're going to have a baptismal service later. So they're going to go into the water. We, a lot of us have already been there, but he's given us an, another opportunity to hear how we need to be purified once again. Amen? Purification, meaning the act on operation of cleansing ceremonially by removing any pollution or defilement. Purification in the Bible, encyclopedia.com, refers to a certain rite in the external worship of God. Purification seeks to remove legal uncleanliness so that the purified individual may resume normal activity in society. I have a few promises uh, about purification. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7.1. I didn't have my Bible up here at first, and uh, Pastor Lorna has shared with me, um, listen, don't go up there without your Bible. Pastor Helen said it to me, and I'm going to say it to you, because <laughs> I was like, I have my iPad and my phone, and it was like, nope, Holy Spirit, nope. <laughs> the Word of God, you need it. In front of you. We have technology, but it's nothing like flipping through the pages. Amen. To, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, um, 1. 
Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. How many of us fear the Lord this morning? Amen. I want to go to, that speaks about holiness, Mark 7, 20 to 23. You know what? Sissy. Just realized I don't have my glasses on. Um, it's Mark 7, 20, 23. This is great. Whew. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for glasses. Oh, I can see so clearly now. Oh, my God. It's like just bold now. It's just bold and everything. It's just I can see it now. Woo, Jesus, I'm telling you. Mm-mm-mm, that's right. Like, mm-mm. <laughs> so are we all there, Amen. And he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man for, for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy. I'm going to talk about that. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. I'm going to talk about that. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So that's why we need to get purification. Let's go to Psalm 51 and 10. And I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I'm building up. <laughs> Build me up <laughs> until I overflow. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. I'm going to take it to 11. Cast me not away, thy presence, and take the, not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take it to 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy spirit. 13. And then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto me, unto thee. Reading from my notes. It's interesting how, sorry, I'm being repetitive, how God chose me to speak about purification and we have the candidates who will be baptized later on. Amen. My prayer for all of you is that the, letter, the water purify you and you come up fresh. Let the Lord cleanse you all from what you have been carrying. Amen. God wants to set a fire in your soul. He wants to set you ablaze. God doesn't want to physically burn us up, but he wants to burn up all those issues that is on the inside of us. Many of us are walking around with so many issues, holding on to them for dear life. <laughs> Transparency. Don't you want to get set free? When I saw this, I'm like, okay, Lord, this is for someone. Some of us are quick to criticize someone else, but what does the word say? Let's go to Matthew 7, 5. We're going to be a little all over the place. Seven, five. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat, which actually I had... Um, I think it was like the, uh, I'm sorry about that, the NLT or the NIV, it said the log. So you're talking like, compare the speck to the log, right? That's how I, I was laughing too. I was like, that is huge, right? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> I know it's an excerpt from a song, but it's real. We need to stop looking at other people 
and mind your business about what's going on with that other person and take a look at what's on the inside of you. Amen? We will head. This is a verse from a song, but words, it's words of, are of great importance. We will head on a road of self-destruction if we don't re, be real with ourselves. Everyone can be against you. Okay? There was a time, you know, being real, I felt like that. Like, it's not me. It got to be them. It's not me. It's got to be them. No, 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 no. Check yourself. If not, God's going to check you. Holy Spirit going to get you. Okay? Let's look deep within ourselves. Ask God to reveal the issues holding you back. Right? We're talking about moving forward, right? So we can't be held back. Like, year after year after year. How, how many years are you going to, I can't, keep holding on to stuff? How many years? We're going into 2020. Come on, let's get rid of this stuff. Even if you just start the process, right? Because it's not, it's not going to happen overnight, right? Let's start. Start the process. Listen. Don't be ignorant to the devices of the enemy. That's deceit. Pride. Pride is such a big one. We know this one. One of the seven deadly sins. Because that's one of the things. You don't look at yourself. You're looking at everybody else. You look at the fact that it's just me, 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 me. You become a victim instead of a victor, right? Let's go to Proverbs 16, 18. I'm going to read it from the NLT. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness. From the Webster Dictionary, it means blatantly and disdainfully proud. It goes before a fall. I'm going to read um, James 4, 7, 10. You don't have to turn there. NLT. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Do what deems necessary. Hit the throne room. Hit the floor. Whatever it takes for you to be free. If you honestly want to be free, <laughs> you will be free. You have not because you ask not. Some of us want to, like I said, we want to hold on. To it. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to let it go. Okay? Don't sweep the issues under the rug. Sometimes we just honestly don't want to deal with the hurt and the pain, right? But if we don't deal with the hurt and the pain, how can, again, you move forward? God wants to bring us to a place of freedom, of peace, not remaining in those dry places. Speaking of dry. So. Many of us have issues stemming from childhood. I'm one of them. Rejection. My mother had gone through a lot of things in her life. And she, parents, we do the best that we can with our children. But there's things that take place in from that infantile stage to the adulthood that sometimes when we're just all cooped up in our own mess, the children are there watching us. 
I was watching my mother. I knew what she had gone through. But there were words that were said to me that stuck. The words are powerful. We know that is life and death is in the power of the tongue. And that thing is for real. I'm still dealing with that today, 50 years old. I still ask God to help me with it. Be real. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm smart. I'm, sometimes I don't feel smart. You know, I, it took me a long time, and I'll share this with somebody because somebody may need this. I didn't think for a long time I was pretty. I used to, like, look in the mirror, but not look in the mirror, if you will. And I remember, I think we went through some process the, uh, when we were at HT. I don't know if it was Purity Purpose, one of them. <clears throat> and Pastor Lorna was, we had to go through, like, some chambers kind of thing. We had to go through a process of... To just, just giving all our issues over, and I remember coming to her, and she was like, baby, <laughs> God says, you are beautiful. And I was like, <laughs> just started crying, such a baby. <laughs> but from that moment on, because I went into the throne room with expectation. I didn't know what to expect on the other side. But I came out different from when I went in. So when I looked in the mirror, I was like, yes, okay. Let me put a little makeup on, put my little lipstick on. <laughs> Gotta make it fun. Not so serious. <laughs> Amen. And that was when I was, I'm 50. In my 30s. So that's not too long ago. And I was talking to uh, Janine's stepmother like, not, too, like, not too long ago. And she was talking about how that's how she felt. There's nothing nobody... There's nothing nobody can say to you. You have to get that from the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Nobody can say that to you. So that was the Holy Ghost. My mommy was just a vessel used that God spoke so clearly to me. I had never, ever shared how I felt about how I looked to anyone until I got free. Because I want to help somebody. So you have to get free where I'm going with this so you can help somebody. Because as long as you stay bound, how can you minister to anybody else? How can we go out there to the streets and minister to these, minister to these people? These people are waiting for us. We're waiting for us. Time is clicking. It's not my notes. Life is precious. Life is precious. You never know when God is going to call you home. Don't let that happen. Just want to repeat, many of us have issues st um, stemming from childhood. Let's not use that as an excuse for moving forward. Let's break these cycles. I was talking to someone, and I was telling them how their issues are like an onion. That was real. And that's another thing. We need to keep it real with one another. Sometimes, and I, I've, I, Yvette knows it. I'm blowing myself up. You know, I wouldn't say certain things because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. You know, but you have to be real. Just do it in love. That's all. <laughs> Perfect love casts out what? Amen. Took me a long time. <laughs> a long time. But I think I'm better. Yvette? Amen. 
<laughs> Let the witness say amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> um, when you peel an onion, you have to get those layers off before getting to the core of the onion. You were not born with layers. When you came out, you was butt naked. But, like, that's it. Just no nothing. No nothing. You came in the world with nothing on. And that's spiritually, too. You came in, you was fresh as a baby. You was new. Yes, layers were developed as a child, teenager. Someone told you that you were ugly. Well, God said beauty is fleeting. Those layers are our issues we need to identify with and allow God to break those chains. As long as you hold on to them and you won't, you won't be effective in the kingdom of God. CFCC cannot move forward if we don't get set free. Truly. Let's turn to Daniel. Pastor touched this last week too. Daniel 3, right? Lord, where's my little day? You know, I also was like, you know, when before, for those of us who know, when we prepare for the word, before you actually write anything down, God will just download stuff. And I hated it because, excuse me, he would download stuff and I'm on the bus. I'm like, God, I can't write this down, you know? And then by the time I get off the bus, <laughs> it escapes my memory. So then I have to say, Father, can you listen? <laughs> Can you bring it back, Lord? <laughs> it's like all this stuff. I went deadpan for, Pastor, you asked me like three weeks ago, and I just went deadpan. And I was like, oh, my God. It's the first time I felt like this. <laughs> but, um, amen. Y'all help me out here. What in the world? Where's my Daniel? <sighs> Okay, I'm sorry. Where are Daniel in? <laughs> Is it? Right. Come on now. Y'all bear with me. I'm sorry, man. Say that again. Thank you. <laughs> Goodness. You know, I, I like the task because it... it Amen. <laughs> you know what? Oh, God, that's terrible. Yeah, here it is. That's what I call being quick. Actually, that's because I didn't have my glasses on. That's what it was. Here's my, see, look, plain as day. <laughs> we know the story. Daniel 3. Let's read it. About the king Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the king starting at verse one, made an old image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, verse two, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces. He could have just said everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, I'm sorry, I'm reading out of the King James, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. The enemy will try to set you up. Then, and Herod cried out loud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, duclamer, and all kinds of musik, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. How many of us 
feel like when we're going through things, we feel like we are set on fire. Be like, Lord, I know I've been asking that a lot. And I'm like, I usually don't ask why. But I'm like, why is this? I don't understand. Why is this happening? What, uh, again, Lord, why? <laughs> like, yes, I'm ablaze right now. I am set ablaze. But in the midst of being in that fiery furnace, God wants to see how you're going to react when you're in that fiery furnace. Are you going to give up? Or are you going to move forward? What are you going to do? You going to run the other way? <laughs> Seven. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, did I say right? I'm sorry, I fell down. I'm sorry, verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, uh, certain childrens came near and accused the Jews. <clears throat> there was three of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Finally, I know how to say that. You should have seen me trying to spell it. That was just challenging. And then the autocorrect was doing it, its own thing. And then I had to go back again. <laughs> they spake and said to the king, verse 9, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou O king has made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, butt, psaltery, and duclamer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship him, that he should be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Avalon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men... O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They took a stance. They're like, um, I don't care what you say. Um, God is with us. God is not, you, he's always with us. You take a stand, you trust him, you walk that thing out, he gonna, he gonna bring you through the fire. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? They probably was looking at him like, no. <laughs> now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbutt, psaltery, and Dulcimer, Dukimer, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that. And all kinds of mustic, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God shall deliver you out of my hands? <laughs> he is a deliverer, right? What did he do for the children of Israel? Okay? He put us, that's right. Open the Red Sea, and we exodus on through. Amen? Sixteen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. This is called confronting the enemy, straight up and down with the word of God. Amen. They like, no, don't get it twisted. We're not doing what you said. I don't care what you said. We, going, we trust the Lord. That he's going to deliver us out. There it is. But if not, <laughs> be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then, 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. I don't know about anybody in here, but I try to imagine when I'm going through something and I know that I'm trusting God to get through this thing. I vision the enemy so mad and angry. That I, I, in the spirit, you know it. You can feel it because it keeps coming opposition. It keeps coming against you. So I'm like, eh. get thee under our feet, Satan. Get thee behind me. <laughs> oh. 
Then was Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, full of fury in the form of his visage, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spat and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more that it was wont to be heated. Wow. Wow. You put your hand over the fire, over the stove, you like. So can you imagine the power of seven times more? That's hell. <laughs> Period, point black. Oh, well, hell is much more. I'm sure much, much more. <laughs> you be like, dude, like scorched. Just looking at it, you're going to get scorched. Oh, my God. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. When you're in the midst of anything you go through, you have to use a spirit of boldness. Trust. I keep using the word trust because I know for myself, there are certain areas that I trust God automatically, without a shadow of a doubt. Then there's other things I start, self-doubt, all these different things. Um, you know, oh boy, your words even don't line up with the word of God because you're not truly trusting the word of God. <laughs> then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot. Let me just say this. He was the king, but who was the king and the king and the Lord of Lords? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So sometimes he'll let us go through that fire, right? For us to come out untouchable, unstoppable. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was a, a, a stonied? Stony, sorry. And rose up in haste and spack and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast these three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. People, God is with you. He's walking with you in the midst of the fire, the fiery furnace. Amen? I only heard a few. Come on now. <laughs> then, uh, verse 26. Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spat and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Come. <laughs> he was, listen, like, did that, that just happened before my eyes? <laughs> I can't believe it. Believe it. All things are possible with God. Come forth and come hither, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come, came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered to, together saw these men upon whose bodies the fiery had no power, nor was an heir of their head singed. God knows every hair that's on your head. That's the word of God. Not one singed nor the smell of fire had passed on them. They went through the fire, untouched. Then Nebuchadnezzar spat and said, blessed be the God. Listen, you got to bow down to the real king, amen? Of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Listen, seven times, the furnace was seven times hot, went through the fire, no hair burnt, no smoke, 
Do you not believe the word of God? I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> no. This word is for me too. I'm only the vessel. Let me go back. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent, hath sent in his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. There's only one god. Don't get it twisted. Only one. No matter what anybody tells you, there is only one true living god. Almighty breasted one. That's it. Therefore, I make a decree, verse 29, that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Look at that. Look at what God did. They are, again, what? Untouchable. And their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you believe the word of God? Holy Spirit revealed to me that God doesn't want us to bow down to our issues. He allows us to be put into the fire so that we could come out what? Untouched. Untouched from jealousy. Untouched from identity crisis. Untouched from unforgiveness. Untouched from self-doubt. Untouched from offense. Untouched from past hurts. Untouched from sensitivity. Oh my God, I used to be the most sensitive person. <laughs> you wouldn't know it because I was good at hiding it and most of us are good at hiding our issues but God sees those issues. Don't, you can't hide from God. You can hide from people. You can put those, man, how you doing? Bless you. Ah, praise the Lord. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed. I'm <sighs> Couple you could tell if I'm not good, I'm I'm okay, Pastor. Mm. <laughs> There's sometimes, um, depending on what it is, I'm a good. I have a mask because you don't want anybody in your business. That's what that is. Your business is God's business. And I just pray for everyone in here, sorry, that um, I'm getting naked, for real, that we become more sensitive to one another. It's important. I understand, because God revealed it to me, and I'm sure... If you're not stuck in your own stuff, God revealed it to you too, that because you're in your own mess, you can't really be sensitive to somebody else. You can't. Because you're too busy, me, myself, and I. I go through, we all go through. But what keeps me afloat most of the time is checking on someone. I'm not good at it. I think I do pretty good, though. But I'm not the greatest. I'm one of the things that I would like to do and be better more of is checking on, 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 on my brothers and sisters, whoever it is. Whoever God has put in my circumference. Whoever God has assigned me to. It's important. There are people going through. I talked about in my previous, in the previous word about suicide. That's a number one killer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's a deadly spirit. People, let's become more sensitive to one another. Somebody going through something, you know, I just had a conversation with somebody, I don't know who it was. And the first thing, one of the things they said was nobody checks on me. That sat in my heart. We may start checking on people for a little bit, and then for some reason we fall off. Hmm, does God do that to us? Mm -mm. He is right there in the midst from the time that you go through until the time you get free from that thing, and he's still with you. Still. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. That is in, in the sense of the words. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's there with you always. And he, as a body, wants us to be there for each other always. That's Holy Spirit. When you ask God to have his way, he's going to have his way. Because I can honestly tell you, although I prepared, I had to do my job of preparation. I really didn't know how this was going to go. But it's not about me. It's about what the Holy Spirit, who lives with inside of me, is going to do. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. When you just yield over, just yield to him. He can use you mightily if you allow him. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3. I love this portion of scripture. We're going to go from... One through eight. When everybody has to say amen. Again, I'm in the King James. <clears throat> to everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. He's speaking to, he, to us, family. We need to build each other up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. We could do that with one another. My daughter. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from re embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to uh, love. Oh, did I miss that? Sorry. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. If it's only one person, trust is, 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 is difficult to trust, right? But if you just get one person that you, for the most part, feel comfortable with, and you're going through, reach out. Don't sit and be isolated by the hands of the enemy. That's what he wants. He wants to isolate us. It's like keeping us in the closet having the key and he's the puppet master he's the one that has the key no 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 there's a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace this speaks of a time for everything the one thing there is no time for is petty arguments Letting little foxes spoil the vine. 
offense. I'm gonna say that again, offense. I know many people we had in 1227, I know personally, that left because of offense. Because you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that. Or you didn't have control of this. That's another spirit. Come on now, get, get delivered from that controlling spirit. God is in control. Amen? Holding on to things of the past. This is no bueno. <laughs> My co-worker stays saying, no bueno. Especially when it's your loved ones, whether they're blood or not. Brother, sister in Christ, your spouse, your best friend, your neighbor down the hall. Again, you prayed. CFCC, how can we move in unity if we are not united? One thing we all know about us here at CFCC, we love each other. We do. Amen. We do. Everybody who comes in, they can feel the love. And it's real. It's a commandment. But what keeps us from being real with ourselves and one another? What offense are you carrying? God says it's time to let go. Exodus is time. Today, you've heard the word. I pray that the Holy Ghost was ministering to you during this time. Amen. I love you. <laughs> Let's stop hiding. Let's stop harboring things of the past. Let's not go into, I know I'm, you know, service is Wednesday. I, I understand. <laughs> but God gave me a prelude. Amen? It's time. You got a broken heart. God is a true healer. He came to heal the broken hearted. He did. If you have anything in your body, any sickness, any disease, don't hide that. Speak it. Bring it to the elders of the church so they can pray for you and anoint you. Bless you, brother. That's what it's about. It's about the brethren. We are here for one another. I'll be the first one. I think I have a lump over here. It doesn't, you know, the other day I was like, um, hmm, this don't feel right. And I'm not really good with like, you know, you're supposed to, excuse me, just being real, like check yourself. Um, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to tell it. I just told it. I'm not keeping it to myself. Because I, I'm already healed. I'm believing it's nothing. But it's a precaution that needs to be done, right? And that's another thing, right? Um, we get fearful and then we don't wanna go to the doctor. A lot of people have gone before us, I personally know some of them, that they were in so much fear about what was going on, like colon cancer, right? I spoke, I've spoken to so many people about how, you know, they're like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Are you scared to live or are you scared to die? Like, I want to live. There's a mandate on everyone's life here. Like I said, life is so precious. And you don't have to check out early. <laughs> okay? Use that precaution, right, Auntie? Right, Mommy? 
Amen. What we say, um, that cliche, tell, um, tell the truth, same devil. Pray for one another. I'm going to come back with a report. I'm good. I'm good. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. And I wasn't even going to share that, but <laughs> Holy Ghost, he has his way. Because you know you always have your core people that you share it with. But you are my core people. You are my brothers, my sisters, my aunties, my spiritual mom, brother, uncle, auntie, because that's what we do. <laughs> and when do you get to the point of being sick and tired of going through the same thing? Sometimes God... Um, will allow you to go through the same thing over and over again because he wants us to get to a place where it's something we need to learn. I believe it's just trust. <laughs> it's just that simple. Trust him to deliver you and get your freedom. I don't care if it was years before, you have to you take a stand. Take a stance. Take a stance. Show the devil you have no place. Mm -mm, no strongholds here. We're going to break those in the name of Jesus. How many of us are just willing to say yes today? Are you truly willing to say yes? 